Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I have for you today light worker homework for activate your central vertical power current, your Kundalini by Alice B. Claggett. This is part one. The four minds, the eighteen chakras, subtle bodies, and bridges. Today's video is the introduction to part one. Part one has to do with the intricate mechanism that makes up the energy field of a human being. The reason I thought to put that in is that as light workers, we cannot hope to optimize our ability to do light work unless we are thoroughly familiar with the energy field that represents the human form which is far more complicated than most people think, and a miracle, even in the estimation of those who feel it comprises no more than our physical bodies, which is far from the truth. We need to get some idea of all the energies that we, as light workers, work with in order to do our very best job as light workers, I feel. What I will be talking about today, the four minds, the 18 chakras and their related subtle bodies, and the bridges, is to do with what, in truth, the energy field of the human form is. I have made part one into five videos. Today's introduction, then a video on each of these. The superconscious mind and the transpersonal chakras, the conscious and subconscious minds and the personal chakras, the unconscious mind and the subpersonal chakras, and the conclusion of part one. I would like to show you first a truly beautiful painting that I found that I call light workers because it expresses to me how the light workers uh, during the ascension process are channeling Christed and Buddhic consciousness to all of earth and all the beings on it. This painting was originally called The Last Judgment and the painter was Fra Angelico. In the center is Christ with the beautiful golden light of Christ consciousness around him. To either side of him are saints and apostles, all people with Christ consciousness which he has, with which he has imbued them. You can see the golden halos on their heads, for instance. And those halos were typical of the early art regarding uh, the Christian church. Um, because back in the day, when, when Christ walked earth, all of the people that he came into contact with uh, received the gift of Christed or Buddhic consciousness. I'm sure you know about that. And today, with the ascension process on earth, Everyone has a chance, everyone now living has a chance to do the same. It's a nice picture, isn't it? I have, um, I have the image title for you, uh, Light Workers, my new name for it, cropped and renamed by Alice B. Claggett, 9 May 2021, CC by SA 4.0. That's Creative Commons, so I can show it to you. The credit is From Image, The Last Judgment by Fra Angelico between 1435 and 1440. So that's quite some time ago. In Wikimedia Commons, public domain. The comment is, in the image, the light workers are depicted as men who are illumined by Christ consciousness. 
that same consciousness may, according to ascension lore, be channeled through women and even through little children. Here's the introduction I originally wrote. This blog explains more about the human body, the subtle bodies, our chakras, and our four minds. In recent years, I have drawn and updated an image of the human chakras. At first, the image showed 12 chakras. Then a revision showed 18 chakras. Then there was a revision that added the human subtle bodies, the bridges, and the four human minds, that's M-I-N-D-S, the unconscious mind, the subconscious mind, the conscious mind, and the superconscious mind, to the framework of the 18 human chakras. I think I'll show you the very tiny figure that's the view of all of this, the schematic of all of these um, components of the human energy system first. You can barely see it here, I think, but you'll see a picture of a human being with circles, some of them colored, all along the axis of the spine and above and below that. And then on the left you'll see brackets that show the four minds. The uh, unconscious mind at the bottom, the subconscious mind above that, the conscious mind higher up around the head, and the superconscious mind above the head. The brackets on the, on the other side have to do with bridges, bridges between some very interesting things that we'll be getting into. Then the labels here that absolutely can't be seen are the labels that represent the names of the chakras. So you just get a general idea. Here's a person. Um, there are all these chakras, personal chakras, transpersonal chakras, meaning above the person, and subpersonal chakras, meaning chakras below the, the person. In the old days, there were only a few chakras. In, this, in the personal arena, and not as many as are shown here, only seven. But some of were added in here as more and more light came in at the shift. And then we started sensing transpersonal chakras and subpersonal chakras. So we now, at times of high light, as is about to happen, we now have access to many more tools, which I'll be getting into later. The title of the drawing, again, is Four Minds. 18 Chakras, Subtle Bodies and Bridges by Alice B. Claggett, 21 February 2021, CC by SA 4.0, um, from my website Awakening with Planet Earth. So it's Creative Commons and I can show it here. The description is so very weighty and complicated that I thought I would wait and go over it as I show you the, the smaller portions of the image and explain them. Otherwise it would just get too detailed, I feel. I thought I'd talk at the outset a little about the different minds. Now, a lot of people in the world today, especially the Western world, believe they have and work with only their conscious mind, centered around their brain. People in primitive societies were more likely, in indigenous creeds for instance, were more likely to work with the subconscious mind in the, that's centered around the gut brain, around the colon, um, around the lower body. Uh, and they did this through what's known as low magic, I believe. Low magic practices which subsume and uh, direct the minds of other people um, through their, gut, their own gut brains, their own subconscious minds. And um, in today's world of science, people tend to use the conscious mind and to think that, that they are very logical people, but yet still within them is, lower down, the same mind that they used 
when they were to navigate the world when they were young children before they reached the, the age of reason. So that's the dreaming mind at night, for instance. It's a subconscious mind that comes into play as, as, the, as the conscious mind sleeps. Um, some uh, mesmerists and um, black magic people today use what's called high magic to control the conscious mind. And the way that they do that has to do with finding the soul wounding that lurks in that mind and maximizing the soul wounding so as to put that person into a state of anguish where they themselves can't direct their activities very well. Um, I my, myself feel that both high magic and low magic are uh, unethical, uh, unethical things to do. I don't think there's any human being on earth today who through his rational mind has the ability to direct anyone else's free will and control it. I think that our personal arena of endeavor here on earth is our own energy field. So the subconscious mind centered around the colon and the gut and the conscious mind centered around the head. These are two um, minds that are known to modern psychiatry and psychology and, and rarely overlooked. A lot of effort goes into discovery of the hang-ups and the hook-ups and the snags in those two minds. Um, some years ago I, I was sitting in meditation for quite some time with a group of people who unbeknownst to me at the time, uh, exercise mind control through another mind that's called the superconscious mind that is above the head. And uh, I didn't know that mind existed until I read the writings of Sri Aurobindo. And he, he explained something about other minds that exist than those known in the Western world. One of them was the super conscious mind, which he called superconscient, I think. That's, I think, a French term. Um, so I renamed it superconscious mind, it, along the lines of the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. For more on that, you can go to my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, at the URL https colon slash slash Awakening with Planet Earth dot com, and there you can search for the blog entitled, in quotes, Four Mental Zones by Sri Aurobindo and Thoughts on Mind Control Here on Earth. That's a blog I wrote and published on. 12 August 2013. I ought to mention that I do not entirely agree with Sri Aurobindo's explanation of the four mental zones, but I do agree completely about the existence of the superconscious mind. With that in mind, let's go back to the subject at hand. When a person does not know that they have more than one mind, mental center, one mind, uh, they're easily controlled by someone who knows this. And that's what I found is that people who have that understanding from the esoteric learnings of India have a tendency to try to control and uh, act as dictators for humankind in great waves of social consciousness that they themselves choose to be better for humankind without regard to the free will of individuals. I consider this to be unethical as well. I, and so I've written quite a bit about it in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, which you can t look, look at, uh, to do with astral thuggies, what I call it, T-H-U-G-G-E-E-S. Uh, you can go to my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, that's https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com and you can look up the term astral thuggies and you'll find out quite a bit about 
the type of astral beings and human beings projecting their astral form as well, who try to take up residence above our heads in our superconscious mind and, uh, and direct our activities in, in that way. As light workers, we have the uh, assignment to clear our energy fields of all external influences so that we can work with our teams in a clear, clean energy field to, to help heal Earth. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind I think of as being below the feet. And it's very dense, very compact, and known to modern psychiatry and psychology. And it's very hard though to get a glimpse of it because it's the fundament, it's the underlayer of uh, the archetypal in images of each culture. And so they're so deeply imprinted on us from birth uh, that we take them for granted, I feel, and, and it's, it's very difficult to discover actually what's going on with that. But we as light workers need to do our best to clear that arena as well. Um, it's a difficult job, but it's the light worker's job. And so I talked about how I researched in different um, disciplines, in, in psychiatry and psychology, and in esoteric lore for information about the different, actually, telepathic centers, because the interest of esotericists is often, unfortunately, to do with mind control and mesmerism and getting what they want in the world through controlling other people. So I translated that into, into terms such as the, the different consciousness levels of the mind because I felt that to be um, more consistent. It's a consistent naming process. And it emphasizes what the light workers feel to be important, and that is our own personal energy array, so that we may offer as many pure blessings to Earth as we can. I had quite a bit of reading and synthesis of other people's ideas of the new chakras that have come on board in the shift, both within the personal chakras and also above the head, and also be below the feet. And I have only put together as much as I could with as much agreement as I could get from the many people who have contributed to this topic in such recent times. There is quite a bit of disagreement as to labeling and naming of the chakras, and also quite a difference of opinion about the number of the chakras and the color of the chakras and so forth. But I have done my best to make this drawing one that we light workers can work with during solar cycle 25. I feel it will suffice for at least that length of time. Then there are the bridges. And I had heard about and some people naming the heart chakra the astral bridge. And I really liked that idea. And then I found that other people were naming uh, other chakras to be bridges. And and I really like that too, and I take the best of what I could find in terms of bridges uh, and renamed some from my own understanding how I feel it ought to be. It's not channeling because uh, this is such a changing process. The human energy system is still unfolding and the DNA is unfolding and everything is changing, but it, at, at this moment, uh, I have this to offer you. I feel that the, in the arena of the fifth chakra above the head, the fifth transpersonal chakra, there's what might be termed a bridge to formlessness. Uh, that is because the chakras above that, above the fifth, are apparently the domain of energy fields that don't relate to our concept of form. Then just above the head, I have indicated what I feel to be the soul bridge. Some people call this the causal template. And I say that because I locate the soul itself as a second chakra 
above the head, the second transpersonal chakra. So the bridge would be the first chakra above the head, not the crown chakra, but the next one up above that. If you're lying on a massage table and you have um, a healthcare worker stand behind you and pass her hands back and forth uh, above, above your head in a horizontal way because you're lying down, uh, above your head, you'll, you'll begin to sense most likely where those energy centers are, those transpersonal chakra energy centers. It'll start to feel like there's energy where her hand touches it. Um, then we have the astral bridge located in the heart. Then we have beneath the body what I call the incarnational bridge. Some call it the earth star just below the feet, the first subpersonal um, chakra. Um, and I feel that makes sense because from Mother Earth to personal form we are birthed. Okay, so that's the that's the bridge, that first energy center beneath the feet is the bridge from Earth to our form, to our physical form. Going on the assumption that our human energy array is an elegant, simple, very finely tuned mechanism designed by, by beings far more wise and uh, knowledgeable than we and for a specific intention or a set of intentions for the place of humankind in the realm of all beings in the universe, I uh, decided that it must be that each of the subtle bodies described in esoteric lore has to be associated with one of the chakras. That makes sense to me from the standpoint of elegant simplicity. And so in my sketch I've arranged, as insofar as I'm capable of doing, uh, for a pairing of each chakra with a certain subtle body. Another thing that I've done that's unusual is I've assigned various chakras to each of the four minds. The subconscious mind I have assigned to how whatever number it is of subpersonal chakras beneath the feet. I have come up with six of those just from my collation of what other people have said about it, which has been extremely diverse. So I picked what I felt to be most resonant with my own work and added that to the sketch. Then, uh, as far as the subconscious mind is concerned, I made that the domain of the lower triangle, which is the first, second, and third chakras, old style, also known as the first, second, and third personal chakras. Uh, then the domain of the conscious mind, I made the remaining personal chakras, chakras four through seven. And the domain of the uh, super conscious mind, I made the, all the transpersonal chakras, of which I have depicted five, five of them. Um, when you go out and search online, you'll come across just an amazing array of, of different ideas about all this. Um, but for my work, for, if you're going to be reading my blog, I think you'll find that that my scheme is something you'll refer to over and over again. Uh, is a tool to help you understand uh, the things that I'm talking about, which in many cases are my own channeling and not available online elsewhere. In very many cases that's true. So, so it's a useful tool, I feel. That's it for now. God bless you all. Keep you safe and be with you through all your days.